Good morning. It is great to have you today. We're going to go over some announcements first before we get started. It doesn't sound like they're listening to me, does it? Hello? <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, just a couple announcements. I know you I know, that was online. Yeah. Who cares? Right, that's right. They like to fellowship, and so they're, they're doing a good they're, job. Just they're, always, they're always that way. Excellent job. Just I'm, sitting in your seat I'm, talking I'm to you. I'm glad for them. Yep. Hey, if you are watching online, make sure you comment so we know that you're with us, joining us. And a couple thanks to the Nance family, Todd and Ann. I didn't realize you guys were part of that, but you guys were doing the cutting. Um, and the, the Judy family and the Fiorita family, they cut, they trim, and some teens, they trimmed the trees in the back so the driving service people could see us better. So I don't know if that's good. That's good thing. I, don't, I don't know either, but anyway, thanks everyone for all your work for doing that. That's good. And then the gathering, which is St. Mary's camp meeting, begins tonight. And the service tonight begins at 6 o'clock. And I'm going to read this statement. <coughs> Oops. It says, the Northwestern Ohio, this is from our district center. The Northwestern Ohio district gathering is occurring this week. People can attend in person with a mask, or they can view online or either Lighthouse Camp and Retreat Center Facebook page or on YouTube at NWO NAS. And for all details of the schedule and speakers, go to nwonas.org. There's also a copy of the schedule on the bulletin board. And I told the people in the driving service that if you have a problem um, getting online, talk to Rick. Okay. Rick is our expert. He's going to tell you how to get online for that service. So, Can I tell him just real fast because it's easy? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Yes, please. Um, the best way that I think for you to get on to watch the services is if you just go to our church website on the main page, which is homeroadnaz.org, and I put a link pretty close to the top of the page that just says if you want to watch, you can click here. Okay. And that should take you right to the page to watch. I'll double check it this evening when the service starts to make sure it's correct, but okay. I think that'll be the easiest way. Very good. Make sure you join us. Um, if you're a delegate and you're not going in person, you can also watch all those services during the day. If you wanted to be a delegate and want to see what goes on, you can watch during the day. Can I do that? No, you can't. You're going with me. Oh. So, okay. Hey. But speaking of all those services, tomorrow evening, Jeff Fiorita will be receiving his very first district license. Yes, he's here in hand. At that service. So you want to make sure that you can watch, watch online, and that service begins at 7 o'clock. So make sure tomorrow evening, set your alarm and watch, watch Jeff as he receives his first district license. Uh, because of camp meeting, the Wednesday devotional that we typically have, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to have you watch online um, at those services. And then because of this week and all the different meetings, the office hours are going to be different. So if you are planning on coming to the office, make sure you call just to make sure that we're here. Ladies Bible study will continue, though, at 9.30 on Tuesday. If you have any questions, talk to Barb. And this is the last week to collect um, donations for Baby Baker. And then next week, we will start our collection for Baby Weeper. So it's nice to have babies, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I'm glad that other people are having them. That's right. That's right. Keep them coming. That's right. Yeah. That's right. August birthdays. Can you believe August is almost here? August birthdays, there's a list on the um, foyer, or in the, by the elevator. You can get that list. And then NWO missionary books. NWI. What is it? NMI. Missionary. <laughs> okay. All right. Take that off the tape. But anyway, NMI missionary books are available in the corner uh, by the elevator. Or you can go online and get those and read those without actually having the book. If you participate in the fair or you are going to and you want to share those pictures with us, we're going to do a PowerPoint for August the 9th. For August the 9th, we need those pictures, so make sure you send those to us. And the prayer room is open beginning today, so I believe Joanne Marshall is in the prayer room today. If you have any questions about the prayer room, talk to um, Judy Brammer. And an exciting announcement, Children's Church will begin again on August the 9th. And Pastor Missy will be sending out some information about that. So it's good to have you in church today. I'm very glad to see you. And whether you are online or here with us, um, I'm going to let you stay seated today. I know it takes a little extra breath when you're sitting through a mask and you're trying to breathe. So we're going to uh, sing sitting down this morning, I think. But we're still here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. So let's sing together, He is risen.
I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to pray today. And we're going to remember some of these requests. Some of them were sent out via email. Let's remember Phil and Dee's daughter-in-law's father, Al. Let's remember Bobby Jean Sherman, John Donges, Kevin and Amy Allender, Lloyd McClurg, Mary Palmer as she recovers, and then Penny Barth, we're thankful that was an answer to prayer as well. Have you uh, received a specific answer to prayer that you know of just in the recent week? Just raise your hand. Did you do that? All right, good. I have as well. Let's look to the Lord together in prayer. Let's begin with the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So be it. May it be so. Make it so, Lord, according to your will. We have these requests. We have these praises. We, we come to you together in this place just to say thank you, Jesus. Hands were raised. Hearts have been raised as we've sang together. And, Lord, the truth is we are just grateful to be able to worship you today. You alone are worthy of our praise. Take a moment and tell the Lord thank you for whatever it is that comes to your mind. Thank you, Lord. We always have a list. We have a list of the church. We have a list of requests individually. Lord, you know all of our needs. You know the concerns we have and the people we're praying for. We're going to trust you with it all, Lord. Because you can be trusted. You have never let us down. You've always been faithful. In fact, the truth is, we can live by your faithfulness. Your word says that the just live by faith, but the faith of whom? Well, maybe our faith, but Lord, certainly your faithfulness. And so thank you. And all of this we leave into the hands of the one who is more capable than anyone. It's in the name of Jesus we pray and all God's people say. verses that pastor is actually going to go over here in a few minutes as well, but it's from Psalm 103, and I'm just going to read the first couple verses. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits or blessings. You know, I don't know if um, you know this or not, but this week is the beginning of what was supposed to be camps. So if you have known me very long, you know that I love church camp. So it's been a little bit different this week um, as we actually aren't preparing for those camps. And um, I'm sure, like many of you, um, we sometimes find ourselves tired and weary. And I know that kids don't feel like that um, alone, that adults also feel like that as well. So as I was reading through um, this passage of scripture that Pastor is going to be sharing, um, really the words that stuck out to me were praising and blessing. And uh, I think at certain times in our lives, we have to sometimes dig a little deeper to find those praises 
or those blessings. And I know that we've had to talk about that many times with our own children. And uh, there were um, a couple kids that I talked to yesterday about um, finding joy, even in the midst of times where um, sometimes we are a little tired of things being different or things getting canceled. And so I've been spending some time in the scripture, uh, really focusing on the blessings of God and praising his name regardless of the situations that we are in. And that is one way, the first way, that I fill my soul. Um, but another thing that I happen to do is I, I sometimes will take a look at pictures to see memories of not just the things that uh, are, are the ways that God is blessing us now, um, but also the way that God has blessed us in the past. And of course with camp and all different things that I do with the kids, um, it's been a little bit different. Rachel, do you have any of those pictures when they work? Yeah. I wanted to show you and remind you how blessed we are with all these Aubrey kids, we went to, um, we were putt putting and it was so hot. And I, had, I remember I had to keep telling the kids, don't use your clubs as sticks. You in there, even though you got moved up to the youth group. Okay, what's another one? Oh, when Meredith and I dressed very similar last summer. I think there's there might be one more. Oh yeah, that was our fall harvest party, and Jill kept telling all of us, "Don't jump off the wagon when it's moving." But you know, things like that um, just remind me of the blessings that God has given to us in the past, and what it is um, to be blessed as a church, not just individual families, but we are blessed as a church. These children are our responsibility. They have been given to us to train up, to uh, show them the ways of the Lord. And the ways that we bless the Lord and the ways that we praise the Lord is an example to our children. So I don't know if you're weary this week or kind of bummed out about maybe things that have been going on in your world. Um, but I do know that God is still among us and that he's not just blessed us in the past, but he's blessing us now. Even if we have to dig a little bit deeper, deeper to see that, I know that he is still with us. He still has plans for us. And he still wants to bless his children. Let's thank the Lord for our children. Amen. Our children are very important around here. And we're looking forward to the announcement that we heard earlier that this church is going to resume. And uh, if you are available to help Pastor Missy, I'm sure that she will not turn it down. A certain Persian king was elevated to a different post after coming from a very poverty-stricken home. He was elevated to a royal throne. And after he became king, he sent his servants to the old shack where he was raised with orders to gather relics from the old cabin. They brought fragments from his home, many broken toys, his patched shirt, a crude wooden bowl from which he ate, and numerous worthless mementos of his childhood. I find those every time I go to an antique store. But anyway, that's another story. All these he arranged in a special room of the palace. And each day he spent one whole hour sitting among the memories of his humble past. On the wall hung a prayer, lest I forget. May we never forget. That's exactly what the writer of Psalm 103 was thinking when he made his list. In fact, he begins, we're going to begin in verse 2. Praise the Lord, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I don't know about you, but my forgetter works a whole lot better than my rememberer these days. Anybody like that? Shake your little heads or raise your hands. I can't see your face. All right, good. In fact, just the other day, this past week, I forgot where I had laid my iPad. You say, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, those of you who aren't into tech, I understand that you wouldn't care, but this is my e-brain. This is my electronic brain. Everything, almost everything I do and everything I have, from devotions all the way to trying
trying to figure out if I need to buy a new car is in this iPad. And uh, I did not know where I laid it. I checked everywhere. I drove from Urbana to Springfield, back from Springfield back to Urbana. I could not find it. And then finally somebody said, uh, you know your iPhone has a little thing, find me on it. And I looked it up and you know what? It told me exactly where my iPad was, and it was in a place that I know I checked. Have you ever had that happen? I looked behind the seat of that car, but sure enough, that's where it lay. My forgetter works a whole lot better than my rememberer. Which is probably the reason why it's a good thing to list our benefits from time to time. How quickly we forget. In fact, ever since last fall, when uh, we studied those passages of Scripture that included be thankful every day and be thankful all the time and so forth. That word Eucharistio, remember that? And it, it contains in the original language the words grace and the word joy. And the idea is that as we give thanks, those other two things happen in our lives. And ever since then, in my list, which is on my iPad, by the way, and uh, it has a, you know, it has one of those passwords, so you can't get in and see what I said about you. But anyway, um, in the list, I always close with Eucharistio. In fact, so much so, this thing reads my mind. If I, if I just type in EU, it finishes the word, and then I start listing those things that I'm thankful for, and often it includes you. It's important for us to remember our benefits. We shouldn't forget. And this writer starts with the most important one. Listen, it is the most important benefit you and I have and ever will receive. It's in verse 3 when he says, He forgives all your sins. Is that a praise of the Lord or what? Amen. He forgives all your sins. Like that king who went to his special room to remember his past, maybe we should do something similar once in a while. I, I mean, when is the last time you thought about where God brought you from? Soon after my conversion, I was called out of this county to another county in Ohio for schooling. Then I was called out of this state for more schooling. And after 26 years, I hadn't been here for 26 years, I was called back to my home county, Clark County, to pastor this church. Well, guess what? As I travel Clark County from time to time, the ghosts of my sinful past haunt. You know, it's amazing how the enemy, or wouldn't you know it, my memory does finally kick in on those moments. And I remember some things that I don't want to remember, but I'm very thankful that they are forgiven. All our sins are forgiven. Amen. I'm thankful for the Bible verse in Isaiah 43 that says, I blot out your transgressions. I remember your sins no more. And I just have to humbly thank Jesus for that fact. I can guarantee you that I would not have had a good marriage and a wonderful family. I wouldn't be standing here today if I had continued the path I was on. Anybody relate to that? He forgives all your sins. I think we ought to thank him for that. He's not finished. He's not finished in verse 3. He says, and he heals all your diseases. And right away I want to say, wait a minute, Lord. I know I've been the recipient of physical healing. I know plenty of people who have right here in this church, but I also know situations where the restoration of physical life didn't happen the way we prayed for or what we hoped for. So then I dug a little deeper and I realized, well, wait a minute, maybe he's talking about the eventual healing that we will all receive as Christ followers in heaven someday. That's not a consolation prize, by the way. Heaven is not a consolation prize. But then I dug a little bit deeper and I realized, wait a minute, this could be a Hebrew parallelism where the writer uh, would write one sentence and then he would follow it right away with another sentence with a similar meaning but different words. It's very possible that what he's primarily focusing on is he heals the diseases of sin, the disease of the soul. I had a man, a former pastor at one time say, why are we always talking about sin? It's because that's what we're always in, it seems like. It may be our own sins as we look in the mirror. It may be somebody else's sins we're dealing with. It may be the atmosphere of sin in which we live every day on this earth. But we're constantly dealing with somebody's sin. It's a disease of this earth. 
I'm thankful for Psalm 103 when he goes on and he says in verses 10 through 12, He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Are you glad for that? Or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he's removed our transgressions from us. He heals your sin disease. I think he deserves another praise. He's not finished. He's not finished. The list continues in verse 4. He says, who redeems your life from the pit. He's not going to let this thing go, is he? The word for pit means destruction, corruption, ditch, grave. Some commentators say he's talking about hell. Whatever you call it, the ditch that many of us found ourselves in, he reached down and pulled us out, literally saving us from our sins. Do you remember what the angel told Joseph and Mary, the meaning of his name? His name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins sins. Redeemed means he paid a high price to make it happen. He pulled us out of the pit. Praise his name. Then there are other benefits listed in verse 4. And he crowns you with love and compassion. In all kinds of ways he crowns us with love and compassion, but referring back to that former situation, he not only pulls us out of the pit, but he does it out of love and compassion. He doesn't do it out of, you shouldn't have done that, and pointing his finger at us, and, and, uh, and uh, all the kind of meanness that we can see sometimes. He, he treats us with love and compassion, aren't you glad? The crown. What's the crown represent? He crowns us. This King of kings and Lord of lords crowns us with love and compassion. In fact, the Bible says that we are co-heirs with Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords, co-heirs with Christ. My sister and I are co-heirs of mom and dad's stuff. Many of you have been co-heirs of your parents or somebody else's Stuff, but I want to tell you something this morning. It's nothing compared to being co heirs with Christ. In fact, I don't even know what it all means. I just know it's going to be good. And it is good right now to be co heirs with Jesus. He crowns us with love and compassion. In verse 5, he goes on with another part of his list of benefits. He says, Who satisfies your desires with good things? Good things. The translators had a little trouble with this one. Depending on which translation you use, it says translates my, or it satisfies my life, satisfies you, satisfies your old age. Uh, I like this one actually out of the King James. It says satisfies your mouth with good things. I know you're going to think I'm going to say White Castle. Whoops, I did. <laughs> little things like ice cream cones, grilling out. Chocolate. Satisfies my life. Good friends. A nice home. Family. Marriages. Church family. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I don't know about you, but when we come together, I'm renewed. A lot of things that happen in life where God fulfills my desires, I find myself renewed, restored. He satisfies your desires with good things. In fact, he agrees with Isaiah 40, 30. You've heard this before. Even youths grow tired and weary. Pastor Missy mentioned that. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. He satisfies your desires. That sounds good, doesn't it? Well, we skipped a verse. Actually, it's the word, the verse that Pastor Missy already read. It's found in verse 1. And this time we skipped it on purpose. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Have you ever talked to yourself? Now, I know some of you have. And I'm a little concerned about some of the answers you're receiving. He's talking to himself. He's... He's telling himself to remember all of the God-given benefits that are in his life. Bless the Lord. Literally means to kneel as an act.
act of adoration. My inmost being means my whole nature, my intellect, my emotion, my feeling, my sentiment, my brain, my heart, my lungs, my tongue, my guts. Bless the Lord of my soul. Sometimes I find myself acting like little Joey. Maybe you heard about him. One day, just one day after his birthday, he was in a bad mood. He was whining and he was complaining and fussing. And finally his mother said, time out. I've had enough. So she began to list all the things that they had done for Joey just one day before on his birthday. They took him to the amusement park. They bought him souvenirs. They fed him hot dogs and ice cream and pizza. Gave him a big birthday cake with his favorite chocolate marshmallow icing. And on top of that, they gave him a new puppy. She looked at him and she said, so what's the problem? Joey said, well, that was yesterday. What have you done for me lately? Sometimes we act that way, don't we? How quickly we forget. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for all of his benefits. And may we never forget. Will you pray with me? We could really just pause and list an endless list of our benefits. It's not only good discipline, it's healing to our souls and our very spirits and our bodies to list the benefits that you have provided for us. You are a wonderful God, and we give you praise today. So I just pray, Lord, for whatever reason, a person who's watching online, or a person who's in this room right now who just feels a little bit down, bummed out, or whatever the reason, we just pray, Lord, that they would realize the wonderful benefits they have in Christ Jesus. Beginning with the most important, you forgive all our sins. May you find us being willing and grateful recipients of that grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever.